When this tower crane has finally been assembled and the driver's in his cab, he probably won't give a thought to the way it was put together. But joining things is probably one of the most fundamental processes in engineering. Traditional fastenings like nuts and bolts are still one of the most useful methods, particularly when the joint is only a temporary one. A plain flat washer under the nut serves a number of purposes. Can you think what they are? A tower crane can have as many as 14 sections, like the two they're joining here. And each joint must be bolted tightly enough to withstand the forces involved when the crane is in action. Engineers have worked out in advance exactly how much torque they need to apply to the nut for the maximum force the joint will have to take. Friction between the mating threads on the nut and bolt and between the nut and the clamped assembly will help to keep the joint tight. It'll also help to stop the nut coming loose, but just to make sure they finish off the job with a spring steel nut to lock the fastening securely. If the bolts are fitted horizontally, the load on them is different and a simpler technique is used. Notice that the washer is split. Can you think how it'll help to stop the nut vibrating loose? Every bolt is designed to take just so much torque. You may be tempted to give a nut a few extra turns for a really tight joint. But this is what can happen. The bolt shears just below the nut. And can you see what's wrong here? The lower edge of this nut bears down extra heavily on the surface of the component. By using a taper washer, you distribute the load evenly over the surface of the assembly. When an assembly job has to be carried out on site, on a crane for example, or this pylon, the traditional nut and bolt is a very convenient and cheap method of fastening. So far, we've only looked at structural steel assemblies, but civil engineering techniques have created many new needs. In a building like this one, literally thousands of fastenings will have to be used. One problem is how you fasten into concrete masonry, and here's one method. This is how it works. As you tighten the bolt, a metal wedge is drawn up inside a loose metal shield. The sides of the shield expand and are forced against the surrounding concrete, biting into the masonry to provide a really firm grip. The self-drilling anchor is another very common fastening. It has a cutting edge of its own, and you use the anchor itself as a drill bit. This way you can be certain you're drilling a hole of exactly the right diameter. After drilling the hole, a small wedge is inserted into the end of the anchor. When it's driven back into the hole, this wedge forces the ends of the anchor outwards to grip the surrounding masonry. It's then broken off from the end of the drill and left behind in the concrete to provide an anchor, for a bracket perhaps.
Literally thousands of these anchors will be used in this particular building to carry brackets for hot water pipes, electrical conduits and many other fittings. The type you use depends on the material you're fastening into. This one has to be fired in because the masonry is too hard to be drilled. On a building site, most assemblies are static. The load on the joint hardly varies. But wherever you have movement, this load will change. A joint may be subjected to vibrations or sudden sharp impacts. This experiment shows what can happen to an ordinary nut and bolt if the joint is vibrated. The nut is first tightened. These markers will show you precisely what happens to the nut when the joint is vibrated at about 800 revs per minute. The nut comes undone in seconds. It could have been worse. This nut is out of round. As you tighten it onto the bolt, the two threads jam together. Compare it with an ordinary nut. The out of round one stays locked onto the bolt. It's one of a whole class of fastenings called stiff nuts. This one locks onto the bolt because of a nylon insert. It stays on even if there's no tension in the bolt. The manufacturers don't really expect you to treat your washing machine quite like this. We've deliberately put an unbalanced load in to exaggerate the effect of the spin drying cycle. But you can't see any nuts flying off here. In this kind of light assembly work, you can use a lock washer to keep the nut in place. This one increases friction between the assembly and the nut by means of teeth which bite into the two surfaces. If the joint has to take a heavier load, a spring washer is more effective. Can you see how this one works? Here's another useful fastening, the circlip. It's lightweight and easy to fit. It's particularly suitable for a component which has to be rotated on a vibrating assembly. In the aircraft industry, much stronger types of fastening are needed. The fuselage is mainly riveted. But where panels have to be removable, you need a strong fastening which will not only withstand shocks and vibrations, but also be easy to undo. Since the joint is only accessible from one side, this fastening is made in two parts. One half is actually built into the fuselage. And here's the other half. It can be removed as quickly as it's fitted. Sometimes nuts are secured by wiring them together. The wire may pass through the nuts only, or it can be threaded through the bolt itself. Drilling a hole in a bolt is a very tricky manoeuvre. 
but the slotted nut or castle nut provides a very effective fastening.